Finally, here we are. We have Dirk Nowitzki's final home game. Whew. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit choked up. Now, you might be wondering why I say final home game. Here's why. Yes, look to my Dirk figurine here on my lovely desk. Here's why. He hasn't said anything officially. The Mavericks haven't said anything officially. But every indication says this is it. I would put his chance of returning at less than 2% unless he has a change of heart at this point. We've all seen the 41-21-1 banner. Number 41, 21 seasons, one team. That, that is the truth of Dirk's situation of his career of everything to this point. Mavericks say it wasn't an indication that this was going to be his final year. I I think that they say that, but that's not necessarily true. I think it was to be for that because they had been told, hey, this is uh this is what it looks like for me. I'm probably gonna be done. I think Dirk's much happier in terms of the stride he's found post All-Star break. The first fifty or so games of this season, Dirk was abysmal out there. Like fifty seven games through. Ooh. Ooh, it was bad. He he looked like he didn't belong on the court. He couldn't move at all. At all, at all. But post All Star break, I feel like he's finally gotten his body back closer to where it was last year, and he's at least been able to enjoy this last stretch run. Now, everywhere he's gone all season long, he's gotten organic love from road crowds, uh, from opposing teams and coaches. Literally, every road game the Mavericks have had, either the coach or the players or the crowd, everyone has been talking about Dirk, cheering Dirk. They're basically paying homage to one of the all-time greats, and it's amazing to see. Dirk also gets, just the other day, he's now one of five players in NBA history to record 10,000 defensive rebounds in his career, which, good God. But he's legit, man. He's legit. He's number six all-time scoring. His accolades are longer than my right arm, and it's, it's been a pleasure watching him. I wrote a piece... For Dallas Sports Fanatic just last week, last Thursday, right before I went to my final game to see him play. That was last Friday night against the Grizzlies, his second to last home game. I basically wrote about how, because of my age, 29, and the year I really got into the NBA, about 2002, I didn't have, I didn't have, uh, I didn't really pay attention to the NBA before that. I mean, I knew about like Michael Jordan and stuff in the 90s, but I didn't watch it religiously. I wasn't a... I wasn't a fanatic of the of the team or the league. I just kind of, I was a kid. <laughs> I didn't pay much attention to it. And when I moved to Dallas in 02, that was really the changing of that whole situation for me because my dad was watching the Mavericks and I see Dirk in his fourth year, I believe, at that point, uh, running out there, third, fourth year, whatever running out there, and the Mavericks got off to a stupid hot start that season, like 14 straight wins. They went like 18-1 and one or 17-2 and two through their first 19 games. I mean, just incredible what they were doing. They end up winning 60-plus games that season. They go to the Western Conference Finals against the Spurs, and I'll still say to this day, if not for Dirk suffering an MCL sprain, and I think it was either the end of Game 1 or the start of Game 2, he basically misses the entire series, and the Spurs win in six. If Dallas, if Dirk didn't get hurt or if he had been able to return, I think Dallas wins that series and then beats Jason Kidd's New Jersey Nets in the NBA Finals. And then we're talking about Dirk with two titles, and I'm not even going to get into 06 and how it would really be three titles, but it is what it is. Dirk has done it all, and he's earned the right if he wants to come back. Has everyone's blessing. No one's going to tell him to go away. But, man, I realized... As I was writing that article, I've never known the NBA without Dirk. Like in terms of watching it and really being engaged with it, I've never known the NBA without Dirk Nowitzki. And it was kind of it was kind of sobering. Like I was excited for the game that uh, that next night, but I was also kind of somber. And it, when he passed Wilt Chamberlain uh, a week or two ago, hit number six all time score again. That was awesome. But it was also a, a kind of sobering moment in its own right because you started looking around and you're like, 
there's really not any milestone for him to chase. Now, I know I just mentioned the rebound one. That one just kind of snuck up on people, I think. I don't think people were really counting that down aside of maybe two or three games out. But there really aren't any milestones left to chase in terms of practical, in terms of practicality and reaching them. It was sobering because it was like, the journey's done. We're in the epilogue now. We're in the send-off where all the story of the games, it doesn't even matter win or lose, the story is now Dirk and watching him and honoring him and cheering him. And all his season long, every shot he hit, especially once he started closing in on that Wilt record, every shot he hit was treated like a game winner. And when he passed Wilt, it was as if he just hit a buzzer beater to win the NBA Finals and bring us another title. I mean, that was the response that the crowd gave. The game I went to, every single time he squared up for a shot, you heard a gasp from the crowd. You heard a, ah, and then he made the shot. Everyone lost their mind. He missed the shot. And it was just, ah, oh. like, I know Dirk is super humble, super private. He doesn't like that. I We can't help it, Dirk. It's not anything like that. Uh, it's showing our love and our appreciation for everything that you've meant to this city, to this team. It, it's just tremendous. You are an all-time great, whether or not you will consider yourself that. That's neither here nor there. But, uh, man, it's surreal now. As I'm recording this, it's Tuesday. He's got his final home game of his career tonight. That is, of course, the topic here. He is playing against, well, the team, but really it's the Dallas Dirks at this point for the rest of the year. He is playing against the Phoenix Suns. I don't even know. I don't. I don't know if Luca's gonna play. He hasn't played the last couple games. I think they're trying to tank. I would like for Dirk's sake to get a win tonight, but you know it is what it is. They just beat the Grizzlies the other night, so for their tanking chances and keeping their first round pick, it probably isn't their best beneficial decision to win a game. But Phoenix is another really bad team, and it would be good to send Dirk out on a win at the Double A C. Uh, tomorrow night then, Wednesday night, he goes to San Antonio for presumably the last game of his career. Again, nothing's been made official, but everyone around him, including J.J. Barea today, they all seem to be tipping the hand that this this is it. Unless he has a midsummer complete change of heart, this is it. And I think Dirk, maybe when he steps away, because it's, it's a Herculean effort for Dirk to get his mind and body right before games, after games, for him just to maintain an NBA season. Forget just getting into shape for the season. Just to be able to maintain and get through the season in general is a Herculean effort for him, even though he didn't debut until December 13th this season. It's a Herculean effort, and as Carlisle put it, you know everyone likes the sausage, the sausage being, in this case, Dirk scoring and still raining down threes and all that. But, he goes on, Nobody likes to see how it's made. No one likes to see the the struggle and the just physical toll he puts himself through. The hours upon hours of preparation on game day. Just stretching, just taping himself up, just basically trying to piece himself together just to get out there and play. And you look at his mobility, it's almost completely gone. He's basically the spot-up guy. His plus-minus isn't going to be anything eye-catching this year. It's not very favorable, but you know what? He's earned our respect, damn it, and some guys might like to throw shade at that, but they're just salty because they don't get the same attention. Dirk can go to Madison Square Garden and have the entire crowd chanting for him. He can go to the Boston Garden, the TD Boston Garden, and he can have them chanting, we want Dirk, and cheering him on as he's shooting threes in the final minute of a game that's already decided. Uh, he can go to the Clippers. He can go to the Staples Center. And he can have their coach, Doc Rivers, stop the game with a minute left just so he can get on the PA system and lead the crowd in a several minutes long standing ovation for Dirk, recognizing his greatness. That is respect. That is how you honor a guy. I mean, obviously, we know that the fans of the AAC have been doing it all year anyway. But that's how you, that's how you honor it. You don't go out there and ask for the attention. And Dirk has never been that guy. I would love to see him come back one more season with Luka and Porzingis and have a chance to get back to the playoffs one last time. I would love it even if he came back for just the opening night next season just to technically get into year 22 
and have one game with those guys, even if he's only on the court, court 12 minutes, but one game with those guys, with Luka and KP, and just get a sense of what that would have looked like and been like. It'd be awesome, but I don't think we're going to get that. I think that it's pretty much done at this point, and it's one of those don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened moments. Rather than be somber and kind of melancholy about watching a childhood hero of mine retire and ride off into the sunset, I'm going to instead drink in every last moment of his career. The the highs, the lows, I've been through it all with Dirk in his run. I have been through every high, every low, every gut-wrenching moment. And man, it's been a pleasure. It really has. I'm going to I'm going to be sad when you're gone. I'm glad that the franchise is in a good place as you're leaving. The way that he went about business, never gouging the money from the Mavericks like Kobe did down the stretch. Kobe ruined the Lakers for several years because of his last contract he demanded. Dirk never did that, and man, huge props, huge respect to Dirk for that. It's because of decisions like that that the Mavericks are able to be where they are right now having Luka Doncic, and then being able to go get Kristaps Porzingis. The future looks pretty bright in Dallas, and it's sad that as it's finally getting better after several years of not so good, it's a shame that uh, it just came a little too late for Dirk Nowitzki. But you know what? Respect to number 41, to Swish 41. It's going to be, it's going to be different watching the NBA without you, but... I can honestly say I don't know that I would be as much of an NBA fan today as I am if it weren't for you.